Now, to be honest with you, all the big, very successful resellers that I know do not shop at these sorts of places at all. There's no guarantee you're going to get anything. It wastes a ton of time and there's far better places to source where you can build your revenue, build your inventory up. I'm standing in probably three or four million dollars worth of inventory in a nearly 3,000 square foot building now. Um, we've got $1.7 million worth of listed inventory just on eBay. And we would have never gotten here if we sourced at these places. Hey, it's Don. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going to get you to that next step and what sure as heck is not going to get you to a level where you know you're extremely successful and able to do whatever you want and not have to worry about things one thing that the biggest most successful sellers that i personally know and i can't think of one that uses these these places to source that um is that they don't go to garage sales they don't go to thrift stores these days at all. Last year I went to two garage sales and only because they were neighbors of where we're living. The year before I went to three and I know that because I do taxes and I've got to count the receipts and all of that. We may have went to um, six trips to thrift stores last year. We were looking for a table, a kitchen table, something vintage, something round. Anyway, the, the point being that those sorts of places there's no guarantee. I know people right now, right this minute, that spend 30 to 40 hours and even more than that just driving around hoping to find something either at a thrift store, a garage sale, or a place like that. You, you can't get to the, the max level when you never know if you're always going to find something when you're out in the wild. If you're just randomly driving around, even if you have, even if you have um, listings that say, hey, this is going to be there, that's going to be there. Around here, if the sale starts on Friday, you can darn well be assured someone showed up Thursday morning, Thursday evening, maybe even on a Wednesday, trying to catch somebody outside at that house. That's why a lot of times they don't even list the, the address in the, the paper until the very day of the sale because people will sit outside or float and sit outside wait and all that kind of stuff. So to be honest with you, when I stopped doing the garage sales, and I did them for a while because I couldn't think of any other real way to, to do it. I wasn't advancing my business at all, going to garage sales and thrift stores. I was just paying the bills and barely making ends meet, just doing that. But once I figured out that I can go and spend more time searching online or making phone calls and all this other stuff, hooking myself up with deals, posting articles or ads for items and things like that, circulating, sending my card, dropping my cards out. I don't have to do those sorts of sourcing. Pretty much 98% of everything we buy these days is in bulk. 100, 200, 300, 1,000 items all at the same time. Sometimes it's 10,000 items at the same time. A couple of good bulk purchases a week, a month, whatever the case may be, if you're a one-person show, is enough to ride you through the entire year if it's decent stuff. The biggest factor, too, when you go to a garage sale, even if the stuff is fairly cheap, is your time invested. No, I know, I hear this all the time. There's video after video after video of people going to garage sales and all they find in every one of their videos is some horrendously good thing worth hundreds of dollars. I've had people so upset because they thought it was going to be so easy by the time I hear from them. There's, there's, you know, they're so far out. They're, they're not making money. They've lost so much. They've blown so much time and stuff like that. The, the fact that a lot of that stuff is that the majority of the garage sales you go to, you're not going to find that kind of thing. It's just like um, a rare record. 95, 98% of every record you run into isn't probably going to be worth more than 20 or 30 bucks. And chances are it's going to be worth less than five not even worth listing on its own. And that goes for how many garage sales you, you go to. I've been doing this literally, we, we sat down and figured it out for 30 years. And in that 30 years, I've never had one single garage sale that 
met the standards of a bulk purchase like we do right now. Never, it never had these massive purchases where I'm just floored with merchandise. Yeah, I've done very well with garage sales, but I was never enough to, to just get over that level. And I don't wanna just eke buy. We, we bought a house with the money that we earned by bulking everything. Everything is bulking. Every single big full-time reseller that I know does bulk purchases, they don't go to garage sales, they don't go to thrift stores anymore because there's a hundred other people out there trying to do the exact same thing. It's just like a flooded category when you try to sell something like many of the clothing items out there are so flooded, it's not even funny. The pandemic has flooded most of the NOS stuff even worse because it backed up when they couldn't open the stores and on and on and on. Having a ton of people at the same places kills it as well. If you go to some of the auctions, there might be a hundred people trying to bid on the same few items at an auction. There are, though, many places to find stuff. You'd do far better just going to a Facebook market uh, post for something. We've done extremely well on some of the Facebook market posts for records. Now, back with some of the folks around here that I personally have, have known for years. They literally drive around the whole week, 30 or 40 hours a week, going to 20, 30, 40, 50 garage sales to get enough stuff to list on the weekends, just to pay their bills, just to do the exact same routine over and over again, and they can't get past that peak. They're still trying to find the, the, the right sourcing venue, the right types of items, the, the right, I guess, mix of all of that together. Obviously, we do a lot of long tail business. A large chunk, the vast majority of everything I buy, probably 99% is, is, could be considered uh, long tail. Yeah, sure, there's a bunch of items that always sell, but you know that's just because of sheer volume. If I list 100 items, I can sell three to 10, even 20% of those within a day or two. Sometimes the same day I list it, I've already made my money back, I've already made a profit, I've paid for the labor, I've paid for the time. And then everything else in a massive bulk purchase is just gravy. It's just all, you know, profit less eBay fees. And again, nothing I have in my business right here, I could have acquired going to garage sales. I would still be sitting there in a rental house, suffering with no space, all that sort of thing, if I hadn't just branched to things that everybody else wasn't into or to things that I knew better, or things that weren't as valuable as the other items, but still netted me a horrendously high profit margin. You know, that's the key to it. And again, we have volume. We're approaching 40,000 listings just on one single store on one single platform right now. You know, we've got 1.7 million on just our main eBay store. And we're on many other platforms with you know hundreds of thousands of dollars on various other sites. So I've got a lot of inventory, and the majority of my inventory isn't even listed. So you know, bulk-wise was the only way to go. It's the only way we built up our bank account to afford what we got going on right now. And to be honest with you, I'm out maybe driving around for an hour or two a week maybe three or four if I'm piddling around or I'm meeting somebody and I end up walking around somewhere. That's it. I, I'm not on the road. I don't need to be because it's all set up ahead of time. I know if I'm going somewhere, I'm going to get something. Even if it's just a, a Facebook post, Facebook marketplace or Craigslist, if you can ever find anything on Craigslist anymore. But the, the, the point being again, you know that you're going to get something. I go back and forth when it, before I ever go out and look at something. I get more pictures. I get an explanation or try to get you know a breakdown of what they got. You know how old it is, quantity. You know get some long shots of a whole bunch so I can zoom in and kind of see what's there, all that kind of stuff. If they're not willing to do it, I just move on to somebody else. Probably any day of the week, there's half a dozen large bulk lots of something locally for sale, just out to the public, not counting all the behind the scenes deals that we're able to do these days because of connections. You know, if you're going to garage sales and spending, you know, more than 20, 30 hours a week, you've got to figure that into what you're actually selling, like the cost of those items. If you're getting three or $400 worth of items and you're out driving around for 30 hours, you're not making a lot of money out of that, if any, really, when you figure out wear and tear and gas and your time. My time's very valuable these days. We're working on construction. I've got studio walls up, which we're gonna show some clips on shortly here. Um, 
the kitchen and the housewives were down to the final stencils on part of the walls and on and on and on and on. Everything's rolling into place just fine, but I've got a lot of stuff going on, so my time is valuable. We list as well things for us that are easy to get up. The majority of what we list these days are two photos, or I can scan them on a duplex scanner, or I can scan many of them really quickly on a flatbed in bulk, and then crop and cut them out one by one for each listing. Those are the, the, the best ways for us to be able to cut down the amount of time we spend on listing. Everywhere we can cut out a few seconds here or a few seconds there, we do. We gang up like-to-like -like items as well. Again, we get them in bulk. So I might have 20,000 postcards walk in in a single day, 50,000 postcards, 10,045s or boxes of old toys, metal cars, uh, army men, that's a big one. I can get 10, 20 pounds of those sometimes of just mixed, who knows what's in there. You know, and, and to do those, you're selling them together in bulk. We rotate and all sorts of other things to keep interest in our store as well. We don't list everything all at once. We space it apart. These are all ways that you know you can be extremely successful with cheaper items, bought in bulk, less sourcing time, less everything. I would rather do it smarter and email some people, make some phone calls and not have to drive around and leave the house. I can do that extremely quickly. I can hopefully in many cases, somebody will text me back a photo of something. Do you want it? Do you not want it? Here's a couple more images. Yes, no, whatever the case may be. Ads can do that, hooking up with people at the right places. I buy a lot of stuff from other resellers. You know, people push stuff my way. I do give a finder's fee, and I know I get people, so even if I don't buy something, I still throw some money or gas their way. They know that the next time around, if there's something good, I'm gonna take it. So, you know, the, the one place, though, that I, I don't go to unless it's for fun or it's a neighbor is a garage sale, because it's the biggest waste of time that I have. I've never had a uh, uh, $2,000 day at a garage sale. I've never made $4,000 off a single item from a garage sale. I've done that with big bulk purchases. $4,000 uh, Northern Soul 45s. Tommy and the Derbies, for, for an example. We had three of those. Action figures. The last 17 Star Wars. I've never found those sitting at a garage sale or a thrift store, but I sure as heck found them in some bulk lots. So you've got to think about your time. Your time is your biggest killer in almost any business. Now researching is another one of those things people waste a lot of time in. Now I've invested a ton of time into researching stuff because I wanna be able to look at it and instantly know whether it's good or bad in many different areas. When I started, you couldn't use a phone. There wasn't phone access. They, it wasn't something you could do. You'd have to know the items, and that's the best way. You know, I see a ton of, of videos and stuff and people looking everything up and stuff. The best places I ever go to, you can't look stuff up. Either there's too much stuff to look through in too short of a time, and you, you got to yes or no, yes I want it, or no I don't want it. No picking. It's usually I buy it all or I don't get it. So the phone thing isn't going to work for how I shop. You've got to know the stuff. Old school days, phone wasn't a thing. And I can go out and pick because I had to know it. The way you figured out if you made some money is you got home and you looked it up on eBay. That's how it was when we started. When you're out looking at three, 4,000 records, tens of thousands of postcards and stuff like that, you, you can't use your phone to look stuff up. There's far too much stuff there. The person who's showing it to you wants to sell it, especially if it's dirt cheap like it usually is. And you know, to be honest with you, if you can't tell if it's good without your phone, you know, you shouldn't be looking at the stuff to begin with. Because again, the majority of every single big pick I go to, I'm not using my phone. It's, it would be totally impractical. You don't want the people thinking that you're looking it all up trying to get a, the best deal and rip them off as well too. You've got to know your stuff. There's tons of videos of people showing them finding stuff, but they're always looking it up on their phone. You've got to know it on your own. That's an investment in yourself and in your own business, being able to look at something and instantly know what it is without having to pull out, you know, 20 books or your phone or something else. I don't source at garage sales. I don't source at thrift stores. Those are just maybe for fun or to find a piece of furniture or a table or something like that. It's just not worth my time. 
And the majority of the people who are doing it, who I know around here, they're living paycheck to paycheck, so to speak, still, because they can't break the barrier. They're only bringing home a couple dozen items, 20 items, 30 items in a week, and that's you know spending most of the week going around and driving the places. If they're lucky, they might get 50. And they're all in different categories. They're all you know bigger items that, that take five, six photos. They're all you know stuff that's gonna you know take time to list. Our list time is extremely small. I can have an employee list most of the single items that we do through a duplex scanner, and it costs me about 25 cents per listing for them to get the listings up. 25 cents. If you only can get 10 listings up in an hour, just on an average basis, that's $15. So it's costing you $1.50 basically to get those listings up. And that's at $15. So, you know, you, you've got to kind of weigh the options on that. It's not just getting a bunch of stuff. You've got list time, you've got photo time, you, you've got shipping time. Again, if it's not something easy and simple to ship. Bottom line is though, you got to do this smarter, not harder. You know, figure out the best place, figure out bulk purchases. You know, relying on a garage sale that may or may not have something a garage sale that may only have five things of value and there's 20 people trying to race you to that same garage sale. You only can go to one first in the morning usually, you know, and if you're not at the right one, you could be SOL. There's days I know folks who go out garage selling come back with something they might make enough to barely even cover their gas. So anyway, and that's the same way at thrift stores around here. They're so hit and miss. With, with bulk purchases, I don't worry at all where the next sale or purchase is coming in because we've just gotten so much inventory from doing it that way. And all of this inventory here is pretty much free. It's already been paid for. We've already pulled an item or two out and paid for the entire purchase. The bigger folks, the folks who've been doing this for a long time, the folks who, who uh, you know, are into the same types of things as we are, know exactly what I'm talking about. I run into people quite often out in public and that's the same thing I hear from other folks as well. One or two items pays for it when they buy in bulk and off they go. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. and lights. Mmm, think someday I'll really be eating Jiffy Pop in outer space? I wouldn't go back there without it. Look for Jiffy Pop's special Goonies Glowing Cap Offer. See package for details.